After the user registers, logs in, and uses the app, the last part of their journey is likely to log out. So in this part, we're going to add a log out button to our home page so that the user can log out. So we're going to start off in the UI layer. So we have this home view, and this is our only view that gets displayed after the user logs in. So in this view, in the header, we're going to have a log out button. And this is going to go to the right of the hello username text that we added. So in this row that has that text, let's add another column definition. So just add that. And this will be a button. I'm going to go in grid column two. The content is going to be log out. And then we'll need some margin on this that we're not pushed up against that text to the left of us. So we'll add some margin. Let's roll with 10 to the left. And then this button is going to be kind of ugly. But I recall in another place in our app, I believe, on either of these login or register views, we have this button transparent style. And this will simply make that button transparent which I believe in this case is what we're going to do. So let's use that style and we'll see how that looks in a little bit. So button transparent, if you're curious about what the style is, just a refresher. All it is is a transparent background and a zero border and some padding as well. So back to our home view, this should be enough to display the button, but when the user clicks it, we want to log out. So we're going to tie this up to a command. So let's have a binding to some kind of logout command that we're going to create. And at this point, let's head into the home view model and define this command. So this is our home view. This is the UI for the home view model that we have here. Let's add another command here for that logout button. So this is going to be the logout command. And let's actually create a command that's going to perform the logout. So in our commands folder, let's add a new class in here. This will be the logout command. This command is not going to be async. Everything is going to be synchronous in here. So we can just inherit from command base rather than async command base. So let's implement this. And we have our execute method to implement, which is not async. So this, of course, is going to execute the logout. So now would be a good time to actually describe what logging out means in our app. So as we recall, we have this authentication store, and this holds the Firebase auth link that we got after we logged in. So this Firebase auth link is used to authenticate against our backend server, and is essentially what we use to authenticate. So when the user logs out, we want to clear whatever this Firebase auth link is, so that then we can't authenticate against our backend server because we had logged out. So in fact, on this authentication store, Let's have a method that's going to perform our logout behavior. So let's just make this a void method to logout and don't need to pass anything into here. And as we just discussed, all it's going to do is set our Firebase auth link to null. So now we've encapsulated this logout behavior inside of our authentication store. So now our logout command just needs the authentication store so that we can perform the logout. So let's get that passed in the authentication store, import that, throw it into a field, and we'll get this injected through the constructor. And then when we execute this logout, all we're going to do is take our authentication store and simply log out. But as of now, all this logout command does is, of course, clear the Firebase auth link from our authentication store, which is what we want. But if that's all we do, then we're just going to be stuck on the home page whenever the user logs out. And ideally, we would want to redirect to the login page so that the user could re-log in or another user could log in. So in that case, we're going to need some kind of navigation service in here so that we can navigate to the next page of our app after logging out. So let's get an I navigation service in here from our MVVM Essentials package. We'll call this the login navigation service because ideally this should navigate us to the login page. So let's get that injected through the constructor as well. And then after we log out, all we're going to do is take that navigation service and navigate. So now in this logout command, we're logging out from our authentication store and then navigating to our login page, which is exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and use this logout command now in our home view model. So let's initialize this logout command property to be 
a logout command, which is what we just created. This needs our authentication store passed in, which we have already injected through this home view model constructor. But we also need some kind of login navigation service passed through the constructor as well. So let's add that as a parameter to our constructor. And this constructor is getting a little long. Let me move this on to new lines. And then we also need this pass to our static factory method down here that also instantiates the home view model. So let's get that login navigation service there as well and pass that down to the home view model. So it should be good here. We're instantiating our logout command. Next up, we need to actually pass in that login navigation service. So where we call this load view model for the home view model, this now takes the login navigation service, which we just added. So let's resolve that navigation service and pass it into our view model. So we're gonna resolve a navigation service for the login view model because we wanna go to the login view. And we can resolve this because we already have it registered up here because we already did navigation to the login view earlier when we implemented the register view. Because on the register view, we have a little button at the bottom that'll navigate us to the login view. So that's all set up. We should be good to navigate after we log out. So let me put down some breakpoints and then we'll get into testing this out. So let's run this. Make sure you also start up the API in the background so we can get our data for the authenticated user. So let's run this. And here we go, API running in the background. Let me log in. So submit this, log in successful and kind of messed up this logout button. Let me fix that real quick. Oh, and I just messed up the margin. So left comes first. So let me not do that. I had margin on the top before, but we want 10, 0, 0, 0, and that should fix that. Uh, still a bit messed up. We just need to vertically align this text block. So let's see, I should be able to do vertical alignment center on that. And there we go, that looks good. Trying to think if there's anything else we want to add here, but I think this looks good enough. Let's go ahead and log out. Here we go, we execute our logout command which logs us out through our authentication store. And here we go, we're just setting the Firebase auth link to null, so we'll no longer have access to these tokens. They'll be cleared, let's continue. And then back in our logout command, we executed this navigate, and as we see, we're back on the login page. And we can go through the whole thing again for fun. So login, successful, we get our message, let's log out. And there we go. So that sums up the logout behavior. One thing I did notice, so in our authentication store, there's various instances where this Firebase auth link could be null, but as you can see in this get fresh auth async method right here, we are not null checking this Firebase auth link. So let's just do some optional chaining here in case the current Firebase all think is null, then we won't get a null reference exception here. And then whenever we use this method, let's make sure we account for it possibly being null. So as we can see, we do not, but all we wanna do here is check if the Firebase auth link is not null, then we can go ahead and set this authorization header. Because as we see over here, we dig into the Firebase token on the auth link. So I do wanna test this out real quick. So before we get fresh auth async, let's set this current Firebase auth link to be null. Let's make sure this all works as expected in case this actually is null in any other instances. So here we go, logging in, success. So about to get fresh auth async on the authentication store. Let's step over that. And ooh, so we still get this null reference exception. And I think the reason for that is because this get fresh auth async ultimately ends up returning null instead of a task for a Firebase auth link. So instead of awaiting a task here, we end up just awaiting null, which isn't really something that can be done. And as we see, that throws that null reference exception. So what we can do instead is just explicitly null check this instead of doing this optional chain. So let's have a null check here. So if the current Firebase auth link is null, then we can simply return null from this method. But this will still result in us trying to await a null. So instead, let's make this method async so that we end up returning a task that'll resolve to null. And then all we have to do is await 
this get fresh alt async. So now if we test this out, we shouldn't hit that null reference exception here. We should just have null for the Firebase alt link. So let's log in, success, and here we go, Firebase alt link is null. And then we get this error message, unable to load secret message, please check your information or try again. I feel like we should update this because there's not really any information to check. I think I just copied this from a different error message. So let's fix that in the load secret message command. Let's just make it please try again later. So feeling confident about those changes, let's make sure current Firebase alt link is not null now. And hopefully we won't have to actually deal with this case in our application's lifetime. So it took care of some off topic business there, but just to summarize, we added a logout button to our home view, which we display after we log in. And this ends up tying up to this logout command. And on here, we log out through the authentication store and then navigate to the login page. And for the logout logic, really all we do is clear this Firebase auth link representing the logged in user. So hopefully you can apply this to your own application using Firebase authentication to allow users to log out. And even though logging out is typically the last part of a user's session, this is not gonna be the last part of our integration with Firebase authentication. So stay tuned for more. Aside from that, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave those below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.